What's going on guys, Pat Player here, and this is the first episode of Keyboard 101. Topic of discussion, what's a pedal? Okay, so first off, this is a pedal. Well, you want me to say more? But seriously, a pedal is a device that you use with your foot and is attached to either a piano or keyboard, and it's used to sustain the sound that you are playing on the keys. But there's actually three types of pedals, and in order for us to get a little bit further on that, we're gonna do another history lesson. So do you remember in my previous episode when I talked about Bartolomeo Cristofori when he invented the piano in 1709? Well, he also invented a device called the unicorda, which was the first mechanism invented to modify the piano's sound. A common name used today for the unicorda is known as the soft pedal, but it's also known as the shift pedal. And the reason why it's known as the shift pedal is because it actually shifts the mechanism inside the piano in order to create a different tone and volume when you're actually playing. Typically what it does is that it lowers the volume of the keys when you're actually playing it. And you actually might notice when you're playing the piano, it's actually touch sensitive, which basically means that the harder you hit the piano key, the louder the sound will get. And the shift pedal is designed so that you don't necessarily have to worry about how hard you hit the key, the volume will actually go down naturally. And it also changes the tone just a little bit. It doesn't change it too much, but it changes it enough to give a different atmosphere with the piano itself. Now there's three types of pedals that are on the piano nowadays. You have the soft pedal, which is on the left, you have the sostenuto, which is in the middle, and you have the sustain that's on the right. And we talked about the sustain pedal in the beginning of the video when we talked about the pedal is designed to hold a note for as long as possible. The piano is a string basically, so when the hammer hits the string, it's gonna play that note for however long that note is held. And the pedal can either hold the note down or you hold the key down with your finger. But the sostenuto pedal is actually quite interesting. If you play a number of keys and then you press down the sostenuto pedal, it actually holds those notes and then you can go and play whatever else you want without the notes that you play afterwards being held. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so what I'm showing you right now is the Korg Chrome Workstation. This is a keyboard that I got a couple years ago. It is a phenomenal keyboard, especially for the price that I got it. Uh, you can actually layer up to 16 different pads into one on this thing. But the reason why I wanted to show you this keyboard is to show you the back. Okay, this is actually where you plug in your pedals. These two are actually where you plug in your amp. But these three right here, these are quarter inch jacks, and this is where you plug in your pedal. And I had to shine a little light here so you can actually see it very clearly. There's three words here. You have damper, switch, and pedal. And these two are assignable based on what you want them to be on the keyboard. The keyboard can actually assign these two to change the volume of a specific pad uh, or to change a pad in the middle of a set or song if you're recording something if you don't want to stop or if you're on stage and you want to switch to another pad really quickly you can do that but this one is the sustain i know it says damper there but that's just another word for sustain okay so the word you're typically working looking for is sustain or damper and sometimes it actually says switch like i have a yamaha that says switch okay and that's the one that you want to use for your sustain Okay, so before we jump into actually using the pedal on the keyboard, let's talk about some tips and tricks on how to appropriately use the keyboard when you're using the pedal. First of all, I have a general rule of thumb whenever you are actually using the pedal with chords, and that is three notes per octave. What exactly is an octave? An octave is a series of notes occupying the interval and including two of the same notes, but one note has either twice the frequency of the other or one note has half the frequency of the other. Now, oct meaning eight means that there's eight notes in an octave, but in reality, there's actually only seven. And the reason why I say there's only seven is because there's only seven different notes in one octave. They're actually including the same note inside of an octave because it's within the interval. So what's inside the interval? Well, let's just look at the white keys to start, okay? We're gonna start with C, then it goes D, E, F, G, A, B, and then back to C. Okay, that's one octave. One of the other ways you can actually look at this is the number system, which I will explain in another video. But essentially, C is one, D is two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one again. Now obviously it doesn't go to eight because the interval of the octave is within one. 
or C. But in order to better understand the octaves and the chords and how they work, you're just gonna have to listen to me as I play the piano. I know you might be wondering why I'm in a different room and why I'm holding the camera. Well, that's basically because I have my tripod set up on my piano. And you're gonna have to forgive me because the tripod's actually in the camera. But essentially what you're gonna see is you're gonna see me play in this order. You're gonna see me play one note in each octave, which is the C. You're gonna see me play two notes in each octave, which is C and G, or one and five. And you're gonna see me play three notes in each octave, which is one, three, and five, or C, E, and G. So check it out. Here's an example of me playing one note per octave. Here's an example of me playing two notes per octave. Here's an example of me playing three notes per octave. Okay, got the tripod back, but the piano's still in the way and my daughter just got back from my mother-in-law's house, so I can't keep recording out there. I have a small house, so, you know, and my daughter's only a little over one years old, so she'll just get in the way. She's cute, and I'll show it to you one day, but for right now, I'm just gonna keep doing this video. So you'll notice that the chords got more and more rich as I added notes, and that's just because that's the chord development, okay? Uh, that C, one, three, and five, that's a typical C chord, okay? Which is C, E, and G. But there's other ways that you can play those chords. For example, instead of playing C, E, and G, you can play C, D, and G, or one, two, and five. Or you can play one, four, and five, or C, F, and G. And that's gonna give a more suspenseful sound, as you're gonna see in this video. Here's an example of me using one, two, and five. Here's an example of me using one, four, and five. Here's an example of me using one, two, and five, and one, four, and five together. Okay, so why go through all that stuff about chords before I taught you how to use a sustain pedal? It's very important to understand that that three notes per octave, two notes per octave, and so forth, that's a chord. And you're using the sustain pedal to transition from one chord to the next. Essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hands on the keys and you're gonna place your foot on the pedal. What that's gonna do is it's gonna hold the keys that you're currently playing so you can lift your hands and you can go to the next chord, okay? Once you go to the next chord or series of notes, you can actually release the pedal to release the original chord that you were playing previously to this one. And then once it's completely released, you don't hear it anymore, you put your foot back down in order to play and hold the next chord. And then that transition into the next chord and then the next and so forth. So what I'm gonna show you now in a series of videos in this order is when you actually play a chord and you lift the pedal too quickly, when you lift the pedal too late, and when you lift it at just the right time. Here's an example of me lifting off the pedal too soon. Here's an example of me lifting off the pedal too late. Here's an example of lifting off the pedal at the right time.
Here's an example of combining some freestyle playing with using the pedal. sustain pedal is that there's really no concrete equation to tell you okay this is when you're gonna lift your foot and this is when you're gonna place it back down it, it's really gonna come with practice okay you're just gonna have to play chords and you're gonna have to play the pedal with the chords and then figure out if you're actually lifting the pedal too late or you're lifting the pedal too early if you're lifting it too early like in the previous demonstrations the sounds gonna cut off and then you're gonna have this blank space between each chord if you're lifting the pedal too late there's gonna be this clashing noise Noise where you're gonna have more than one chord playing at the same time but when you're lifting it at just the right time you're gonna hear a beautiful transition between the two chords and it's kind of like driving a stick shift you know you're gonna find that sweet spot when you're driving a stick shift car uh, you 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 have to drive it a lot in order to get to a point where you are comfortable with that car and it's the same thing with the keyboard and with the sustain pedal because there's more than one type of sustain pedal okay so the first pedal that I'm gonna show you is from Yamaha um, this is a very basic uh, block pedal, okay? And uh, I like this one a lot just because of its compactness, okay? If you're a traveling person, this works out really well. Um, the problem is that this backing right here, it only, uh, it's, it's only gonna stick to some surfaces. Like if you have a carpet, it's gonna try to slide a little bit. Um, but if it's like, you got like a tile floor, this is fantastic. It really sticks to that tile. Um, and so uh, I really liked this one when I was using it. Uh, here is another one. This one is on stage, clear, okay? Uh, this is a real basic pedal. Um, for the price, it's really difficult to beat. The only problem is that over time, these pedals can have a tendency to, uh, to start uh, losing their structural integrity right about here, okay? And so basically what happens is that when you actually pull on the pedal, do you notice how it's bent? at the bottom, okay? And that's because all this is just rubber. And so what happens when you're playing is that if this backside is not actually held down by anything, it's gonna bring this up and this pedal will actually not fully activate, okay? Which means that you're not gonna get the sustained sound you're going for. And so if you really wanna use this pedal, you really wanna kinda of hold the back end. You wanna put something on the back so that it doesn't move. And then this will be a fantastic pedal for the price. So the last pedal I'm gonna show you is the Yamaha FC4. It's probably one of my favorite pedals. Uh, I've been using it for a while. It's a little bit more expensive than the first two that I showed you, but these are the three basic types, three basic models that you can get that work really well. Um, real nice. Uh, it, I've been using this thing for a long time, and as you can see, it's not it's not bending at any of the uh, structure in anywhere. Um, so it's very very solid. It's a nice it's a nice heavier pedal, so it's not going to move quite as much. Um, I like it a lot, and uh, so if you're looking to spend just a little bit more money, you can get something like this, or you can get one of the nicer models. I haven't got one of those yet. But hey, that's how to use a sustain pedal. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and like the video and post something in the comments down below. Post some comments that you have or some questions that you may have. Or let me know what kind of pedal that you use and why you like it or dislike it. And also, if you could subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it. But hey, once again, my name's Steven. You can call me the Pad Player. Thanks a lot, guys, and I hope to see you next time.